Good morning, Lincoln City, and welcome to Hotline right here on KBCH Radio in Lincoln City. I'm uh, Roger Robertson. Today, we'll have the opportunity to discuss with the three mayoral candidates for the city of Lincoln City reasons we should vote for him or her. And our first guest this morning is uh, Dick Anderson. Dick is a former, or is a current city council member, former mayor, I should say. Why? Why does Dick Anderson want to be mayor again of Lincoln City? Good question. Uh, I'm asked that an awful lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the uh, reason for me is I think we're a time in our uh, community where we need leadership. Uh, We've gone through the last four years of uh, some less than stellar performance by your city council. And I think um, it's time we, we, the council and city, get back to work. And in order to do that, it takes some strong leadership. And I, I think I've demonstrated that in the past as mayor um, and ready to perform. And I, quite frankly, I'm good at it. I, I'm not to be so egotistical, but um, I think my experience, how I have uh, make decisions, is what the community needs. So who is Dick Anderson? If you were to ask that, to answer that question in 25 words or less, Dick Anderson is? Um, you know, I, I think I'm a very uh, compassionate individual. Um, I build strong relationships. Um, my wife and I have been married for 48 years. Uh, I think that's a real test right there of, um, you know, understanding you know, each other, being able to communicate. Um, I'm very accessible to the public at large. Um, and I, you know, I think my character is, is one, um, that people can trust and do trust. Um, and you know, back to, I care a lot for this community and the people in the community. Dick Anderson is mayor before, uh, was noted at being everywhere. Would you try to maintain that same type of uh, you know, I would. Um, I, you know, made a mistake um, in when I announced my candidacy for this mayor of saying that, you know, pointing to how I, I, I acted and uh, was so visible with weekly coffees and everything else when I was mayor before. What I found as a candidate, um, one doesn't have access to the media um, that one does once they're elected. And so uh, a real stumbling block for me during the campaign was to announce and advertise where I am. But I, I remain um, outside in coffee shops, having coffee, visible at, at events. Um, I would continue to do that as, as mayor. Um, and, and again, I would have access to the media so you know the public would know even more where I am. But funny you bring that up because over those four years, uh, my wife uh, averaged for me those four years how many events I attended or meetings, Mm -hmm. something Mm -hmm. related to city government. We averaged, I averaged 52 events a month for four years every month. Now, that's a lot of things out there (laughs) and it's worrying i I, not everybody needs to do it i was able to i enjoyed it um, but it does wear you out yesterday we had uh, candidates fair at uh, chinook wins casino resort hotel and there were a number of questions that were written down on three by five cards and in handed to me as moderator uh, the fact is there's 35 questions remaining in the stack. We've turned them upside down. Uh, when they draw the questions, you have no idea what the question is going to be. Uh, this one says, have you ever held any elected or appointed positions in Lincoln City government? Uh, the, the answer is yes. Um, and to go into detail, you know, as you've mentioned, former mayor, uh, city council currently, uh, I've served over 10 years, 10 years in the city government. Besides that, um, I've been elected as the North End representative for the uh, North Lincoln Health District, and that's Mm -hmm. the uh, special district that um, is a taxing district that supports the hospital in North Lincoln. So that, too, has been an elected position and quite uh, educational because I've learned a lot more about medical facilities and medical process than I ever knew before. 
All right. Let you draw another questions out of the stack. Uh, and again, they're upside down. I have no idea what it's going to be, nor does Dick. Uh, as mayor, what changes do you want to see in Lincoln City? Uh, changes. One, um, you know, my vision for the community is a growing community. So, you know, we need to grow and we are growing now with a, an older population. Um, we need to put in place and execute those uh, what I call cornerstone elements uh, to encourage growth and um, a healthier community. And that's, you know, we need to uh, finally get done with and supply housing. Housing needs to be supplied uh, to all segments of our population. Um, I'm concerned about finances and not that we don't have them, not that it's doing a good, not doing a good job, but simply that um, build reserves. And so we're stable because if your finances are stable and, and you're comfortable with them, then the quality of life items really come into play and you can exercise them. Our schools need to have the reputation that we want in order to be attractive as our medical facilities as well. So we, we in essence, have to make ourselves attractive to um, businesses, not just locally, but outside the community, so they see us as worth coming to, worth investing in our community, and providing living wage jobs. Questions we've been asking, Dick, again, there are questions that were written down yesterday and, and handed out to us. I'm going to ask uh, something off the wall is, was there any questions that was asked that you wished you would have gotten? No. Um, you know, I, I sat through the whole, whole thing. Sure. I, I loved a lot of the questions uh, that actually went to candidates for city council and mm -hmm. the different wards. Um, those were real interesting. And, you know, again, it shows, um, you know, a stumbling block for me of how, do, how does and should the electeds and city communicate with our constituents um because I, I was surprised dismayed at candidates uh, not knowing you know some of the obvious things that are happening in our community uh initiatives already underway and um it's it's a real dilemma for me here we are on radio um newspapers you know facebook websites press releases but i'm continually run into people that they, they tell me, I wish I had known, and I, I don't know how to get to them. All right, the next question that uh, Dick pulled out of the stack, what is the most important duty performed by the mayor? Most important? Well, the role of the mayor um, is pretty much uh, outlined in the charter, and it's simply stated, you know, you, you open and close meetings. Um, so if by the letter of the rule, you know, you're, opening council meetings and conducting, uh, directing the, or the, the flow of the meeting. I think beyond that, uh, for me, it's a leadership position by virtue of you're being elected by the entire community, not just a ward. Um, you also need to, you know, find the camaraderie amongst the council, the, the interaction, you, uh, getting everybody involved because they've all been elected they all you know, have good passion, um, and, and they need to be included in the discussion. And I've sat on uh, councils where uh, it was limited discussion, mm -hmm. uh, tough process, and I like more of an open uh, discussion opportunity. So for me, it's, it's getting all the council members involved in the discussion, hearing their points of view, and then trying to you know, come to a consensus. Does it surprise you the number of local candidates, the number of people that uh, put their neck out and uh, opted to run either for mayor and or council? I, I'm pleased by it. I, I think it's um, you know you know st staggeringly exciting to to see you know for example Ward Three uh, with four candidates, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Ward Two with you know three candidates. Disappointed with Ward One with only one candidate, um, but you know. Through at least the elections I've been involved in, that's that's often the case um, that one of the wards will be short, you know, with only one candidate, um, and that starts ginning up, you know, the the whole question of do we need wards? You know, why not do it like Newport does? 
it's at know, large at large and you know the top three candidates in the election you know are council because uh, look what's that uh, four seven eight eight councillors for three positions you know that's that's terrific and three for mayor so i'm pleased by it it gives the public certainly choices and that's what it's about all right uh, dick i'll oh. have you reach into the stack of uh, cards and uh would you support HUD Community Development Block Grant money to come into Lincoln City to help strengthen our human safety net? Um, well, yes, we've used block grant money before as a city. Okay. You know, it comes through because of the size of our community. It comes through the county. Um, and, it, you know, I'm, I'm remembering uh, winterization um funds came through block grant where uh the there was grants and loans available to winterize your your house or apartments and those kind of things so certainly i think the the key there is you know what are we using it for um is it available and, and make application um for it um it's it, it's not like um there's money out there just waiting to be picked um it's not you know the state is short of money uh the feds are running a huge deficit um, so it's very competitive to um, get federal funds um switching topics you, you can say look at the highway funds mm -hmm. you know we 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 as a state uh, just increased a lot of fees and stuff to generate uh funds for a highway and yet you know we're we're waiting for federal money as well and and it's all limited very limited so yes would be the answer i i like to use other people's money uh, especially if it's from another tax <laughs> pocket that i've paid into and bring it to lincoln city in all of the years that i've been here uh, the most controversial uh, part of the budget if you will uh, are the grants that the city gives to nonprofit agencies it always seems uh, it's the smallest piece of the pie, probably the most controversial. Should we continue to do those grants to nonprofit agencies? You know, uh, I, I don't know that I would agree with your wording, Roger, <laughs> on, on most controversial. I've been a lot more controversial. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. So, uh, budget-wise. Okay, budget-wise. But even that, um, you know, there's, there's a... Um, I think of it as a United Way concept, um, and, and uh, here the citizens of Lincoln City have allowed this to happen um, through their electeds, and you know we started out with fifty thousand dollars in this line item to give back and support those nonprofits that are supporting the citizens of Lincoln City. Whenever you have, I believe, a, um, a limited pot of money, i.e. 50000 and a long list of organizations, um, there's dis disagreement, there's uh, heartache because I didn't get enough or whatever, um, and there'll be discussion around that. We've raised that now to 150000 um, and we're still oversubscribed. So as soon as the pot grows, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the requests are larger. Um, and, and that's what we're into. So that won't change. I mean, we, we could go 500,000 and I'm sure it would be oversubscribed, um, again, with good organizations. And, and to me, that's the key is I'm willing to support organizations that support citizens of Lincoln city. Um, the mix for us is, you know, define, you know, I mean, you can define Lincoln City citizens real easy, but, you know, we're a much broader community from Depot Bay to Rose Lodge, and they all feed into the Taft school system. They all enjoy, you know, and feel part of Lincoln City and are influenced. And shouldn't they, you know, be part of the solution um, of receiving and perhaps paying into this pot? So. Dick, you've got uh, two minutes to go uh, in, in the time allotted uh, to you to uh, talk about your candidacy. Uh, we're splitting the hour three ways. A uh, couple of minutes on uh, why we should vote for Dick Anderson. Yeah, I think, um, as I said before, we're at those crossroads where um, we've got good people on, uh, you know, moving forward on city council. 
uh, we'll be having three brand new uh, counselors with no experience at all, simply because there's no incumbents running. And I, I think this young group of, of uh, young and experienced um, need a, a leader that has um, some experience, uh, learned under fire, um, and, and can provide the history of some of the, the things that we're going to be confronted with. Because there's nothing like looking back in time and, and viewing our decisions, why we made them. They may not have been right, um, but we can assess that going for, forward, and that's the role of the, the council. But I, I think we need, at this point, a strong, you know, visible, passionate leader. And I'm certainly that person. I'm proven. Uh, so there's no mistake about what you're going to get or no wonderment of what you're going to get. And the ballots are in the mail. Supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> I think the county says, you know, if you don't have them by, you know, the end of this week, you know, call them. What do you say to somebody that says, well, my vote doesn't count? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're talking to a guy who, you know, lost a campaign uh, by 350 votes out of 63,000 uh, votes. Every vote counts. Dick Anderson, uh, candidate for mayor, city of Lincoln City. You're listening to Hotline Live on KBCH. We'll continue uh, with candidate number two right after these announcements. right to your aches and pains. It's soothing, safe, and long-lasting. Made from a blend of herbal ingredients, Tiger Balm is trusted pain relief for everyone. So whatever your age or lifestyle, roar back with Tiger Balm. It works where it hurts. Available at stores everywhere. For a limited time at VisionWorks, you can get two complete pairs of glasses, frames, lenses, the works, for just $49 on single vision glasses and $89 on progressives. And that's a good deal. But we offer that pricing on over 500 frames, which makes it a great deal. A great deal better than the other guys. Right now, buy two complete pairs of single vision glasses for just $49 or two pairs of progressives for only $89. VisionWorks, we're here to help you. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Offer expires November 10th. 923 in the Oregon Coast, you're listening to Hotline, and Hotline today coming to you from the studios of KBCH here in Lincoln City, and we are talking with the three candidates for the mayor of the city of Lincoln City. We're going in alphabetical order. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, all three on stage at uh, Chinook Winds. Our next candidate, David Dolly, and David, welcome. Thank you. So excited to be here with the legendary Roger <laughs> Robinson. <laughs> well, on KBCH, tell me what year you came to bless our community. Oh, gosh, it's uh, 73, 74, somewhere in there. Wow. Long, long, long time ago. Kudos to you. I'm humbled to be sitting across from him, everybody. I keep telling people I never made enough money to leave, so I guess they'll bury me here someday. <laughs> David is running for mayor. Why? Man. I look out the windows, and I would ride my bike uh, right by here with logging trucks. I'm eight years old. Uh, grew up in the building uh, behind uh, the house behind Gerber Tire. My dad owned that building, and I would ride my bike up and stop where Sweet Petite is. There was a bakery there, Colonial Bakery. I'd get a donut and finish up to Ocean Lake Elementary. I have such nostalgia here on these streets, having uh, been raised here, but... Having gone out into the world, learned, I've ran statewide organizations, I've had an impact on our state, and now I'm excited to be back here, moved here full-time over a year ago, uh, been working here over three years, promoting the positive stories of Lincoln City, and to be humbly potentially considered to be a volunteer as mayor of this town that I love is truly a honor, to, to potentially be called a, a person who wants to work uh, for solutions for every single citizen of the city. It's an honor. Did somebody light the fire under David to say, I want to, you should run for mayor or I want to run for mayor? Yeah, I, I looked at what was uh, happening, um, where we are at, and I knew many years ago I'd want to come back here and run for mayor. I have actually set up some communication campaigns over the entire state to promote Lincoln City to some of the largest tourism markets that we market to, but just in the last year, everybody, I have seen more people uh, living in cars. 
I, we have a toilet paper program at a retirement center because some of our seniors are picking between food on Friday and getting toilet paper. And I just filled, felt compelled by hearing these stories and people saying, can you do something in a more uh, leadership way to uh, make it so a year from now, four years from now, we do not have this situation of such fragile living conditions. And what would you do? Wow, I will organize our uh, council and with our city staff. We're, I, my intent is to go to Astoria, believe it or not, and do a road trip to see how Astoria, one of our major developer of apartments, will not build in this city. There has been some broken relationships, and he has gone to Astoria. He's building homes. They're, they're incentivizing him up there. There's also a really powerful uh, synergy between food trucks and restaurants. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've asked uh, why we don't have that dynamic energy here. And we're going to, I'm hopefully we can do a caravan up there. I like modeling success. I like seeing what communities are doing around our state. I was in our state offices in the last week. And there are communities that have state funded low income housing just going up like crazy. But it's not happening in Lincoln City. And I don't know why our, our current past leaders haven't led this uh, relationship with our state to get that funding here and so it's okay to start here going forward i want to focus on the future but those are some things that i would really love to do to build camaraderie with our council yesterday if you look at a replay of our candidate forum i talked about the history of lincoln city in 64 we were three little towns and when we had a vote in 65 to become a city, Roger, do you know what the number two name was that the yes. citizens voted Turmoil. on? Turmoil. Turmoil. <laughs> <laughs> We've always had contention, everybody. But you know what's so inspiring? The number one name, Lincoln City, was selected because we tackled problems in 64, stopped getting at each other, and turned our vision for a common goal. And, man, we got stuff done. We had the governor at that time in a beautiful white tuxedo. Uh, if the news guard could republish that photo of that banquet here on the coast and the pride that we had in Lincoln City, it just it just warms my heart. And I want to reinvigorate that in 2019. All right. Yesterday, we had a whole stack of questions. There was uh, 35 questions left over Man. That, that are <laughs> spread out here upside down on the table. You have no idea what is going to come out of the stack, nor do I. Uh, give me a question, and I will read it to you. And the question is... What is your specific plan to address and help fill the over 50 commercial vacancies in Lincoln City? Wow. So, so important. These are jobs, everybody. You're talking about it's not just a open space. These are 50, let's, pay two, let's, let's say on average two or three jobs that we could have in each of these locations. I mentioned a report. Our top tourism branding expert in the United States came to Lincoln City in 2016 or 2006. I read his report. You guys need to get it. The city needs to republish it. He talks about what other cities are doing to create an engaged community that can fill these 50 vacant businesses. And what he talks about is a cluster experience. Why, when you go through many towns on, a, on four corners, you see a McDonald's, you see a gas station, you see a Burger King, they don't mind a competitor across the street. You need synergy. And Roger has a, a math of a mix of 10, 10, 10. He went through Taft. He says, in Taft, we don't have the mix. You need 10 restaurants. You need 10 uh, entertainment experiences. And you need 10 retail outlets. So we need to work to get a cluster. So I would love to look by neighborhood and get all the existing businesses out and ask them, what do we not have next to you that would make you a destination experience? Because Roger says also, a person who comes to town, they spend four hours to shop. It's so important that once we go to the beach, we have the most awesome beach between Canada and Mexico. It is always going to be our pillar. But then they turn around and look inward. And we need to have something for kids, something for teenagers, something for seniors. We need to have a handicap accessibility neighborhood. That is a huge tourism draw. I also shot an uh, interview yesterday in Spanish because I speak fluent Spanish. And our Latino community in this state is a huge economic engine. We need to have signage in Spanish welcoming these tourists to our community. And we also need to look at how we can cluster 
and bring businesses that complement our current businesses. And Roger, believe me, in 2018, 2019, 2020, these businesses are going to be full. You're going to see such a, a, a resurgence in this town, and it's just an exciting time. If you're looking at starting a business, come to City Hall. It's never been a more exciting time, and I hope to lead the most welcoming experience at our City Hall to have businesses come in and say, what do you need so we can get a punch list, get the rules met, and then let's get going. It's an exciting time. All right, David, draw another question out of the stack, if you would, please. And this one reads, how would you as mayor ensure that when the city embarks on projects such as visioning and design standards, first, that the information has immediate impact on the community, and second, that the money spent on the project is kept local? Wow. You know, this is kind of a really tough subject to me on many, many facets. We had $42 million of urban renewal projects done. All those beautiful sidewalks through Ocean Lake. Do you want to know how many local contractors we used when we spent $42 million, everybody? And I hate to tell you the number, but it wasn't very many. Those are families. Uh, we are engaging right now with developers on the villages. These are, it's a 300 acre uh, property. We don't know who these developers are. I've had developers go to the city hall and say, hey, I'd like to build houses up there. And they're told, yeah, we're in discussions with somebody. So we have a big issue with transparency in this city. And, and yesterday during the online forum, there were three people watching on the chamber site and four on the news guard. So we have a disconnect, Lincoln City. And it's because sometimes of the past, a city could put up some reader boards in City Hall and people would come down and leave their jobs. That does not work in a 2018 lifestyle. You have to put the information on a cell phone and email it and do online polls. That is what modern cities are doing. I myself am a uh, vendor with cities on how they communicate. One of my cities that I work for was voted as the fourth happiest city in the state of Oregon. It's because they, they do not just put up reader boards and say, oh, well, we met with the folks. You have to go to the people on their time. That's the point of consideration. They pay taxes. So we need to modernize our communication system and not say, oh, we got websites, we have Facebook. There is a disconnect, and when you stop listening to the people, it's why only three people show up online to listen, because they have not felt that they matter and that their voice isn't heard, and I'm going to fight very hard to make our citizens of all age groups feel like they're listened to, and you're going to see it come back, I promise you. We're going to have more input on uh, our logo was selected. I hear out in the street it has pros and cons, but we need to do a, a reappraisal if people don't buy into a logo as a community, it's hard to feel part of a community versus, hey, a few people picked it and we're going to shove it down your throat. So there's just ways that we need to do outreach the way modern cities are doing them. And everybody, you're going to feel much better f sitting in council. And if we poll you on a Tuesday and we're in council showing the results of these polls and we had 5,000 people respond to a topic that we're trying to solve, You'll sit on your couch saying, wow, my little click on my phone or my email response was counted. So we just have some exciting times in our future. We have big things to tackle, and I, that's how I want to approach transparency and also working together like never before. All right, grab another question out of the stack there, Sir David. And the next one reads, do you agree that the best temporary location for the Lincoln City Warming Shelter this winter is where they are right now at the Taft Hall? You know, those neighbors who built, who have homes, uh, your grandma may be living a block from this place and you're not local, I, anyone would feel concerned. We have a right for that neighborhood to have a community meeting and talk about does it fit and does it not fit. I've interviewed businesses around there. I've interviewed families. And believe it or not, that's a caring neighborhood. They, they want to be around the table, but I don't want to even say that it should be there long term because that's what that neighborhood should say. But that means we can't just say no to that location. We have to find a location that fits, that's close to traffic. Many of these people are in transition. They need to get a job. 
So it may not be the best to have it right in the middle of a residential neighborhood. It may need to be closer to the outskirts of our community where there's a, a way for buses to get them to their jobs. The next question too is we need transitional housing. So you've been homeless, you got a driver's license and a job. Now how can we have a 90 day or a year long housing pl platform to where you can get some consistency, get some income and then get onto where you're gonna live full time. But statistically also you guys, a large majority of those coming through our homeless shelter are just looking to get to Toledo or Newport. Mm -hmm. We may just need to look at funding and say, here's a $40 bus pass. We wish you the best. So we just need to do a triage system. I mentioned I moved here after being the chair of the Downtown Salem Neighborhood, Neighborhood Association. We have 600 homeless just in our downtown core, Roger. Can you imagine what that would bring to Lincoln City if we had 600 folks on our street corners? We really only have, I think... 40 or 50 from our counts uh, in our warming shelter. It's not hundreds. We had over 550 go through that w warming shelter in right. the last year. Right. So what does that mean? Uh, and we have stories from Family Promise. And I just want to make one statement also with, with homelessness here, everybody. We care deeply about helping. And, and uh, I want to congratulate Sue Anderson. She's the board of Family Promise, Dick's wife. If you go to Shuckers, you're going to meet staff at that work there that have gone through family promise and they now have a job they've got an apartment it's just the spirit of getting people back on their feet and we have stories all over town but everybody family promise helps a two-person homeless dynamic if you're a single mother or single woman that moves to the homeless shelter so when you're donating to these organizations know we're tackling different sides of homelessness and so some may say i donated family promise i'm done no the majority, 90% of our homeless, are, is a single man and single woman. So make sure you're understanding the different dynamics, how we're working to get solutions here in Lincoln City. But you need to donate to both if you want to tackle both sides of it. We've uh, got four minutes left, uh, David, in, you, in your time. Were there any questions that were asked yesterday that you would like to re-respond to? Uh, anything that uh, was asked of somebody else, one of the other council candidates, one of the mayoral candidates? that uh, David uh, says, I want to take that question. Well, uh, and, and I'll even tie it to leadership um, and this topic of three new counselors and why we need leadership um, here. You know, the League of Oregon Cities, I'm a vendor for this organization. They are a training program that our city subscribes to that's going to train our new city counselors. They're going to train me as mayors. They have best practices that are being put forward across the state that I will apply as mayor should I get elected. There's a training program. My expertise and my leadership of a state program to bring continuing education to loan officers, I pooled our state for the, the, the data that was needed, I got that put forward and that program is serving our state to this day. I led that organization to make it happen. And I wanna just make people know that leadership is so important, but if you drive down 101, you're gonna start counting signs. I have massive signs out there. I can't even get to all the locations where people want signs. This is a loud voice of the type of leadership that Lincoln City is looking for. If people don't have signs, that's a reason why. I mean, they've been here. They could have gone up and asked these property owners to put signs there. So there's a loud, common support visual there that I want everyone to pay attention to, that leadership is so important. And I agree that we need to look at this new council, but there's an, a, a great training program by the League of Oregon Cities that we're all going to embrace and bring those best practices so that the city and citizens of Lincoln City know that those at, at, at council and at mayor uh, have the, the skills and the support system. David, you got 30 seconds for a final comment. Well, I, I just want to reiterate the opportunity to sit here across from Roger Robinson. <laughs> He was here in the 70s with me as I was riding my bike, but he still looks terrific, you guys, I'll tell you. Both hairs are and, uh But it's it just such an honor. And, and he and his wife, he's been on my camera. Uh, we love this town. I, I don't think there's another way to say, and, and uh, we will continue to love this town. And uh, check out my website, um, daviddaliformayor.com. And to our uh, Latino familias, yo soy David Dali, yo quiero ser... 
el mayor de Lincoln City y, uh, uh, buscan a Facebook para un video acerca de yo hablando aquí y muchísimas gracias. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, David Dolly. We'll continue in just one minute. You work hard and you play hard. And let's face it, sometimes it hurts. So stick it to the pain with the Tiger Balm Pain Relieving Patch. It's convenient to apply and the Hydrogel technology sends Tiger Balm's proven pain relief right to your aches and pains. It's soothing, safe, and long-lasting. Made from a blend of herbal ingredients, Tiger Balm is trusted pain relief for everyone. So whatever your age or lifestyle, roar back with Tiger Balm. It works where it hurts. Available at stores everywhere. For a limited time at VisionWorks, you can get two complete pairs of glasses, frames, lenses, the works, for just $49 on single vision glasses and $89 on progressives. And that's a good deal. But we offer that pricing on over 500 frames, which makes it a great deal. A great deal better than the other guys. Right now, buy two complete pairs of single vision glasses for just $49 or two pairs of progressives for only $89. VisionWorks, we're here to help you. Some restrictions apply. See store for details. Offer expires November 10th. 942 as we're continuing with Hotline here from KBCH in Lincoln City. And as we've uh, uh, stated several times yesterday, we had the Candidates uh, Forum at uh, Chinook Winds Casino Resort Hotel. Uh, it is uh, available on Facebook through the Chamber website and the NewsGuard website. The three candidates for mayor we invited to come on this morning, and uh, last but not least, Susan Walkie. I went alphabetically, right. and, and Susan comes up uh, in in the uh, third spot. Uh, and, my maiden name's Andrews. So oh, I used to be at the beginning. <laughs> now I'm at the end. Just, just that quick. Well, you, you married a good guy, so it was worth it, right? That's right. <laughs> Yesterday, uh, we gave the opportunity for everybody to make an opening statement. I'll do the same thing for Susan. Now, why is Susan Walkie running for mayor, and what qualifications do you bring to the table? I am running for mayor because it's time. Um, I have served on the chamber board. I've served as a Lincoln City City Councilor, and I would like to represent all of Lincoln City. I've lived in this beautiful community for 26 and a half years, and um, I try to give back as much as I can. I um, am a member of the Board of Business for Excellence in Youth. We, we provide for local um, schools age students um, in a variety of ways um, and I just want to give back to my community. You have served on the council for four years. Four years. Yes. Yeah, uh, You've also served as, as president of the council, correct? Yes, I am currently council president. I've served as budget committee chair and also as urban renewal agency chair. Yesterday's forum, were there any questions that were asked that uh, Susan Walkie says, I'd like to have that one, or, whoo, gosh, happy I didn't get that one. <laughs> um, I was happy with the questions I got. Um, I don't recall any that I wish I would have answered. All right. Yep. Well, as you see in front of you are a number of questions that were left on the table. I'm going to have you just reach into the stack, pull out one, and the question would be, how would you differentiate yourself from the other mayoral candidates? I've been in Lincoln City um, 26 and a half years. Um, when I first came to town, I worked for the city attorney and at the police station for the then chief of police, Mike Holden. Um, I then spent about 15 years filming city council and planning commission meetings. I was behind that window listening to all those land use hearings. And so I do have that institutional knowledge that um, is so important when you look back and wonder what you should be doing in the future. You need to look at the, the past and see what happened. What did you learn from that? Um, that there's a process for things, and um, sometimes that's very frustrating. But I also found out that even though there's the opportunity, so many people don't come forward and give their opinion, and then they're upset later. And people need to, to step forward and, and make their voice heard. And how do you do that? 
More communication with the public, um, getting people um, the word of of what's on the agenda, especially um, planning commission. Um, People tend to concentrate on what's before council, but there's a lot of really important things that happen on the planning commission level, and those... um, are public hearings where there's an opportunity for people to have their opinion as part of the record. So I thought the planning commission is going to be even more difficult than city city council. I worked um, in Astoria for the Clatsop County Planning Department and um, attended all those uh, mm-hmm. planning commission meetings, took the, the minutes. Um, it's a lot of work. Um, once the issues come to council, we have a recommendation and we're supposed to make our decision as city council on the record. Um, So some of it has has been um, weighted through and and, um, narrowed down for us a little bit. All right, Susan, have you reached into the stack, pull out another question? Everybody seems to go to the middle of the pile. (laughs) There it is. What are your ideas for encouraging living wage jobs to Lincoln City? Well, I'm really excited about um, the possibility of a new urban renewal district. Um, Our current district, which um, covers most of the 101 frontage in town, um, is about to sunset, and there's a restriction on the percentage of land in a city that can be in an urban renewal district. So um, we have a small amount that may be available soon, and once our current urban renewal district sunsets, then we can um, pick another area um, to include as an urban renewal district. The advantages of urban renewal dollars is it's not new money. It's diverted from uh, some other um, districts, and we can use it to improve the infrastructure. We're looking currently at the possibility of an urban renewal district up southeast 23rd, which is very undeveloped if you've driven up there, um, we could make that a lot more conducive to um, light industrial, Mm -hmm. and um, those are good jobs. That's the only light industrial zoned property in Lincoln City, correct? Yes, it is, yeah. Urban renewal, I, you know, I obviously got a dog in a fight, but I got a daughter-in-law that's the director of urban renewal, and my big thing has been the undergrounding of utilities. I, I think that is just what this town needs. I agree. Um, some people have complained about the amount of money it takes, but um, I think it just improves the look of town of the town mm-hmm. incredibly and i'm so glad we were able to find the last few dollars to to underground the utilities at d river okay i'll have you reach into the stack and here comes another question for susan other than tourism what are your ideas uh supporting a year-round economy for res- supporting a year-round economy well this light industrial um development okay. will help um Year-round economy, um, one of the ways that we are using transit room tax dollars to provide for year-round economy, which is tourism, but at least it's year-round tourism, um, is the grants by the Visitor and Convention Committee to um, nonprofits and for-profits um, to sponsor events. Um, we just had wonderful um, events this last weekend, Tour to Die For, and the, our new event, Haunted Taft, and I saw a whole lot of no vacancy signs in town last night. Haunted Taft is something that you're intimately involved in because you are the director for the... Uh, 
I'm the Big. downtown manager of the Bay Area Merchants Association, also known, known as BAMA. So Haunted Taft is what? It's a walking tour um, with ghost stories. Um, we start at the parking lot behind the museum between 50th and 51st, um, go to the museum, and then head down 51st with lots of stories, and um, then back and end up with a good story at the Snug Harbor. Good stuff. Yes, it was was very well received. We had pretty much sold out all weekend, but there's still tours available next weekend. And that ties in with a tour to, to die for as well, correct? Actually, we um, we overlapped this last weekend. Okay. Tour to die for is done for the season, and we have one more weekend. All right. Susan Walkie is our guest, and uh, she is a candidate for mayor, city of Lincoln City. Susan, another question, please. Out of the stack, there was just a host of questions left here. How do you specifically plan to address the severe housing crisis in Lincoln City? Well, believe it or not, we're taking steps. It's a um, very slow process, but um, I, the city of Lincoln City is so fortunate to have city-owned property that we can use... Um, as a bargaining tool with developers. And um, we have put four residential properties out for expressions of interest um, and have some developments um, in process. Um, I think we need to continue to work with developers, contractors, and um, find out what we need to help them to build the housing that our population needs. Frequently I hear people talking about uh, system development charges lowering that. Is that something that plays into that equation? It sure is, and um, that's one of the tools that we can use. Um, I, I have attended um, several conferences in the last few weeks, and there are some cities who don't collect the system's development charges until the property is sold. And I think that's a great idea to explore. Um, instead of having to have that upfront system development charge um, to make that payable Mm -hmm. when money changes hands. System development charges, for those that are turning in right now, are exactly what? Um, they help pay for our water system, our parks. Things that are in so, place right now. Right. And as we have new development, then the need for those services increases. So it's a way of paying for the expansion of those services. Yesterday we heard uh, most of the city council candidates. Were you surprised at the number of people that stepped forward to run for council and for mayor? Very pleased. It's so nice that um, there are people interested. So many times we have vacancies on committees and nobody wants to volunteer. And it's so refreshing to see so many people interested in these this campaign. How would I know what vacancies are available for committees that I may have or so interest in or expertise in? Um, there are postings in City Hall. There are postings on the city's website. Um, there's often an ad run in the local newspaper listing all the vacancies. All right. I'm going to have you reach into that stack again, if you would, please. And the question is, uh, who are your financial backers? <laughs> Friends. Friends. <laughs> I, I have uh, many small donors and appreciate every one of them. Okay. Uh, we have uh, five minutes, under five minutes to go. I, I noticed that, that you've got some remarks that uh, specifically you would like to uh, address. If you would like to, to do that, I'll give you that time. Thank you. One of the things that um, disturbed me in last week's um, NewsGuard online poll was that people don't see the need for the new police station. Um, there are many reasons we need a new police station. Um, one of them is 
seismically um, this current building could fall with a small earthquake. Um, it is not ADA accessible. It um, was built many years ago before we had all the technological needs that we have now. Um, it, they are having a hard time making their technology work with the wiring system in the building. Um, I'm really pleased with um, the choice of Chief Palmer as our new chief and um, the, the direction that the police department's going with the community policing and reaching out to the community. Speaking of the police department, the dispatch center always seems to become a bone of contention at times. Should we keep our own dispatch center or should we farm it out? I worked closely with those people. Um, I feel strongly that we need to keep them here um, with enough Data, I mm -hmm. might be convinced that we could do without, but I just cannot see how people in Salem or in the Valley can direct our officers to the correct places. I think we need local dispatch. All right. And anything else that you got to, that you'd like to remark on, Susan? I don't want to leave you out. I just wanted to say that um, as mayor, I will listen. Um, in a leadership role, often listening is more important than talking. And four years ago, a mayor was elected with no experience on city council. And this is, is a case where experience matters, and I have that relevant experience. We need a city that works. As mayor, I will work closely with city staff and meet with the city manager on a regular basis and I will keep um, regular office hours. Um, I will also meet with residents and um, reach out to the neighborhood associations. Keeping regular uh, hours, are, are we talking about within at City Sit Hall? At, in City Hall, and I'm okay. also always available to meet with people. I'm very active in the community in many ways, and. Um, People are also always welcome to ask me whatever they want when they see me. I think I heard you say that you're going to retire from... Yes, December I will no longer be employed. Um, I'm looking forward to... to <laughs> You'll have more time in your hands. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got time for one more question. We've okay. got 60 seconds left in the show. In which party are you, which political party are you affiliated with? I'm a Democrat. Okay. <laughs> Closing comments, I'll give you uh, the time, Susan. Uh, you got a minute to uh, make your best case uh, for running for mayor. I have lived in Lincoln City for 26 and a half years. I've been in, involved with local government almost that whole time. Um, I have served as city councilor representing Ward 1, and I would like to represent all of Lincoln City. All right, Susan, Susan Walkie, uh, candidate for mayor, city of Lincoln City. And again, the ballots are in the mail. Right. Vote on or before November 6th. And you can drop them off City Hall or stick them in the mail yourself, correct? Correct. All right, Susan Walkie, candidate for mayor, city of Lincoln City. This is KBCH Radio, Lincoln City, Oregon, 1400 in the radio dial. Time in the Central Oregon Coast, it's straight up, 10 o'clock. Keith Aldemir, up next with Midday Live.